Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Point American Travel Show. I am your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're just listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto Perez is the owner of the La Palapa group of restaurants. Those are La Palapa the El Dorado restaurant, and now, at dinner, the El Dorado transforms into the Vista Grill, and that's the Vista Grill that used to be up on the hill. Now it has a new Vista, it's right down on the beach, where you get the same Vista Grill menu, the fantastic Vista Grill service, and what's best is it's right there on the beach. You can enjoy dinner under the stars with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It is so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. So, today I have a very special guest. But first, what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, the 29th of May, 2017? Well, Pride Week is just wrapping up. There were parades of all kinds, there were celebrations, there were all kinds of planned events, and uh, it was really, really a, a terrific uh, Pride Week right here in Puerto Vallarta. You can hear my episode from last week where I talked with Isaac from Gay Guide Vallarta and uh, maybe catch up on that particular episode if you want to know what goes on down in Puerto Vallarta during Pride Week. Now, there are, uh, there are some new requirements uh, when you bring your pet into Mexico. So uh, Puerto Vallarta is very pet-friendly. I see a lot of people uh, schlepping their pets with them. And so uh, we want to talk a little bit about that real quick. Uh, They require you to obtain a valid health certificate for your pet. And in addition to a rabies vaccination certification, your vet must now certify a proof of two additional health conditions. One of them is that your dog or cat is free from internal parasites like worms and that your dog or cat has been treated for this within the six months of the date of travel. So you need to show that your dog has been treated for internal parasites within six months of the date of travel. And then you also have to show that your dog or cat is free from external parasites like ticks and fleas and has been treated for those within six months of the date of travel. Now, these new rules went into effect this January, but they started really pushing on them in February. So just be aware of the changes, and if you're planning to bring Fido o Tigger with you on your next journey into paradise, you should find out more about this, and you can do that by uh, Googling the uh, United States Department of Agriculture, Animal, and Plant Health Inspection Service, or better yet, go to my website at www.portofayartotravelshow.com. Go to the show notes for this episode, episode number 20, and you can click on the link that I will give you there for more information about bringing pets into Mexico. Now, uh, the Madonna Nari uh, Italian Street Art Festival uh, was held up in... Uh, Santa Barbara this weekend. And a couple episodes back, you might remember that I interviewed Adrian Ticano. He's that very talented artist and muralist right here in Puerto Vallarta. And uh, he has some great, great uh, works of art that you must see, must see these murals. 
But anyway, Adrian was up in my neck of the woods. Uh, he was sent to Santa Barbara to participate in the Madonnari Italian Art Festival that is held up in the beautiful, iconic uh, Santa Barbara Mission. And he won the trip by placing first in the Puerto Vallarta Madonnari uh, 2016 Festival that was held down on the Malacan. And um, if you want to hear about that and you want to see some of uh, the murals that uh, Adrian has done around Vallarta, you need to go to my episode number 18 of the show. Check out the show notes. I have some of his finest murals around town right up on that site at www.portoviartotravelshow.com. So check that out. Anyway, his work was so exceptional when I came to see him. And, you know, as always, you know, you, you expect something really fantastic from this young man. And uh, he did not disappoint this time around. Uh, I had a chance to interview him just as he was putting on the final touches on the mural that he was creating up there in, uh, in Santa Barbara. So let's get that interview right now. Let's talk with Adrian Ticano. And here we are in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. And I got Adrian Tacano here. Adrian just got done doing a mural here at the Madonna, Madonna, what is it? Madonna Ari, what are they called? Uh, Madonnari. Yeah. Madonnari. Oh, they call it I Madonnari here, I think. Okay, I Madonnari. The I Madonnari. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, coming on again. So we are here in Santa Barbara. Tell us what, you, what you've uh, been through here. How, how's it been? It's been really great. They've, uh, they've treated me really good, and people seem to be really into the art and into the whole festival. So it's really nice to see. I, didn't, I wasn't expecting such big uh, turn up, and, and uh, so that's very gratifying to know that all these people are going to see my work and take pictures, and that's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Well, they're all lined up to look at your work, uh, Adrian, man. They're all looking at that going, everybody stops and go, ooh, look at this one. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of wows and stuff. It's, it's really nice. It's really gratifying. Yeah. Well, you've got a lot of, there's a lot of competition out here. There's, wh- wh- how many, how many um, artists are out here? Do you know? I would say about 100, maybe 120, 150. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. Kids have their own space as well. And I saw some uh, schools that have their space. There's a featured artist right uh, here in front of the church. And uh, the food is great. The music, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but it's pretty nice to work. And um, really hot, but uh, it was was okay. Uh, We made it work. Well, it's, it looks like kind of a challenge. You know, I see some of these people, they, they, uh, they're working, they've got umbrellas, they've got uh, canopies helping them out, you know, keep them out of the sun. And I walk up and you are in the, you're right in smack dab in the sun, my friend. Well, I, I had my hat and, uh, and my beer. So that was, that was good. But yeah, it's pretty hot. I, I came from uh, painting, uh, last week I, I was painting a mural in Coachella in the desert. Now that was hot. That was really hot. So this wasn't too bad, you know. Yeah, I get it. I saw that. I saw that mural. That's that's a beautiful mural. I uh, I hope you send me a picture of that so I can throw it into one of my posts. Okay, will do. I promise. It was. Uh, yeah, it was not not bad for three days of work under the sun. It was. Uh, that was a challenge, but it was. Uh, I like the result. I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm really happy with uh, with this uh, chalk painting. Uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. So do you have like a, a name? Do you have a name for the painting? No, not really. I, I don't usually name my, my paintings, but it's just like a, uh, a mix of, of uh, traditional Mexican design with, uh, with a really beautiful face, which is what I, what I like to paint. It looks really, really beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so what are your plans? What's, uh, what's the next thing that you're going to do from here? They have, uh, they have some parties planned out. And uh, so I guess I'm going to a couple of them. And what else? I leave Tuesday. So I have tomorrow to walk around and 
and uh, check out Santa Barbara a little more. It's a really nice town. I'm really liking it. People are great. Yeah. Yeah, Santa Barbara's a nice uh, beach town up north, and of course, where you're coming from is a great beach town from down south. Yes, yes, yes. I would love to come back next year or whenever. Okay, so there. Some of these people have completed their work. Some people it looks like they're just starting. So it's a three-day festival, right? So you started yesterday. I think it's officially is three days, but I saw I got here on Friday. Uh, no, I got here on Thursday. I think I started working Friday, and there were some people already working. So, uh, like the feature artist here, Meredith, she she has been. This is her sixth day. Uh, so yeah, it, the the bigger uh, the bigger paintings, they've been working on them for for a little bit longer. Okay, got it. All right. So well, it looks like yours is complete. You, you just uh, can now take your take your time and have a, a good couple of days before you uh, head head back home, huh? Exactly. At least one one good day, and uh, yeah, back to Puerto Vallarta to do some more murals. Right on. Thanks. Uh, thanks for talking with me. Thank you. Now, this was Adrian's first visit to the States. And I have to say that Santa Barbara is not too shabby a place to be getting your toes wet when you come to the States. I, I hope that he comes back to Puerto Vallarta because Santa Barbara is a beautiful place. And, uh, but anyway, his work was truly outstanding. When you compared all of these other murals to the many entries, and there were about 100, maybe 150 different entries there, it was outstanding. Um, it was a great event for Adrian. It was a good chance for him to introduce Puerto Vallarta to the, atten uh, the attendees of the festival and to introduce his art to the thousands and thousands of people who attend over that three-day event. And um, yeah, if you can ever make it to uh, one of these festivals, it is remarkable. These people on their hands and knees with chalk and uh, just making these pastels, just making these beautiful, beautiful works of art. So kudos to you, Adrian. You did Vallarta proud, I must say. And anyway, you can reach out to Adrian and you can hire him, actually, if you want him to create a mural for you at your home, north or south of the border. He's, he's available. So I have links to his contact info in the show notes for this episode number 20, as well as episode number 18, where I had a, an interview with him. Restaurant Week is coming to a close this week, so I thought that I would feature one of my very favorite restaurants in Puerto Vallarta for you. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to Gabriela Castellón Perez, and uh, she's Gabby from Gabby's Restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. Now, I love this restaurant. They serve, mm, they serve Mexican dishes, traditional, traditional Mexican food, with, with passion, with class. They're a fantastic restaurant. They are located real close to the famous church in Vallarta, and actually during the interview, you're going to hear the church bells ringing. Um, so when I first met Gabby and her brother Julio, uh, who is actually a chef there at the restaurant, um, and he also conducts a cooking class too, so we'll talk a little bit about that as well in the in the interview. But I was taken aback by their youth. They were just full of youthful energy, imaginative. Um, you know, they have the wherewithal, and anyway, they still stick to the traditional methods, the traditional dishes, and the traditional recipes. And I know you're going to find the story of this particular restaurant's journey from street-side Fonda to the beautiful, inviting, multi-tiered restaurant that it is today as interesting as I did. So let's get to the interview with Gabriela at Gabby's Restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Well, today I am in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, at one of my very favorite restaurants in the entire city, and that's Gabby's Restaurant and Bar, and it's my pleasure to be talking with Gabri Gabriela Castellón Perez. Thanks for letting me come on and, and talk with you today. 
Oh, thank you very much for inviting us to participate in this uh, broadcast. Very good. Now, um, you work with your brother Julio as well, and uh, Julio couldn't make it today. Yes, he's sorry about that, but he has another things to do. Yeah, well, that's okay. You know, <laughs> I, you know, this restaurant's named after you, Gabby. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here to talk to you. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, it's pretty uh, easy to find this restaurant in Puerto Vallarta because it's, it's close to an iconic landmark here, and it's the Iglesia de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, or the Church of Our Lady de Guadalupe. And you all know the one I'm talking about. It's that famous one with the crown right on top of it, the one that you see in all the great pictures of Puerto Vallarta. So anyway, they're right down the street on Calle Hildago. So that's a great location for you, isn't it? Yes, for more indications, if you are in front of the main church, uh, we are two blocks to your left walking, so it's a pretty nice spot here in downtown. Uh, also, we are two blocks uh, up, to the Malecon, mm -hmm. and so you can find us easily. Yeah, and you do have a little bit of an ocean view over here, don't you? Yes, we have a nice terrace. Uh, it's uh, outside, and you can see the ocean view. So also at night, it's a very romantic space. Yeah, it is. I've been here at night. I With love the it fireworks, you know, like at 9 or between 9 and 10, the uh, uh, Marigalante boat. Mm -hmm. uh, he stay like in front of the Malecon and he has the fireworks. Right. And so y if you just happen to be there that time of night, having a little something to eat and drink, and then all of a sudden those fireworks come, it's not your imagination. It's not too much tequila. It actually is a real fireworks, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, some of this tequila can do that to you. Um, all right. So uh, this place is named after you. Um, can you give me a little bit of history behind this restaurant? Okay. Um, well, my parents started this business like 20 years ago. 28 years ago, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and the history about this, uh, my, par my father was a waitress. Uh, he used to work. A waiter? Yeah, a waiter. Yes. He used to work on the hotels. I remember he was working on the... Camino Real, ah. so it's not anymore Camino Real, now uh, it's dreams, but you know in Mexico it's usual to do that uh, start a business on your home mm -hmm. so he asked to my grandparents uh, to, to allow him uh, start a small business here like selling tortas and sandwiches, juices uh -huh. because downtown on that time, uh, used, a, used to be a commercial area. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Banks, the municipal office, everything you need to do. You need to come here to downtown and uh, do the paperwork mm -hmm. for anything. It's not anymore. Right. So we start like that. Small business and then the rest, it was the home. Uh, the time passed and people, the clients, start uh, asking for more things like complete breakfast or the complete lunch. And we used to be like a, a small restaurant in Mexico we call Fonda. Uh-huh, yes. Uh, like with traditional things, cook it like, uh, like, um, like your like mom. Homemade. Yes, like homemade. Yeah. So... We start doing not only tortas and sandwiches, like eggs and everything. Then we introduce the, well, they, my parents, the comida corrida, the lunch special. Uh, like one soup of the day, a few dishes where you dis, uh, choose from and water. Uh, and then the uh, clients start asking for more, so... We or they decide to open for dinner, and there is a lot of history about here. People, customers that uh, used to come on the past mm -hmm. remember a piano boy playing here in the patio where <laughs> we are, or I used to have my 
uh, my dog here, the pet. You know, it was like family. People used to feel like family. Yeah. Uh, my parents uh, divorced, get divorced, oh. and uh, do you remember the crisis of the uh, 2009? Yes, yes. So, uh, like a family, Julio, my mother and I uh, need to do something different because downtown was not the downtown on the old times used to start uh, slow a lot of uh, uh, businesses start closing mm -hmm. so we modify and do like this restaurant right modifications on the creation on our uh, menu also So moving to the Fonda to uh, another kind of restaurants, more spaces like the terrace outside with the view, uh, more ideas like uh, the projection of the movies in front of the wall because uh -huh. most of the restaurants has ocean view and we don't have, we need to like optimize the resources that we have around. So we offer the movie theater outside yeah, that's a great idea with mexican movies the night of iguana mariachi songs uh mexican uh, landmarks so uh, that's about the history my brother decided to be a chef so now uh, he and i we are like running the restaurant yeah wow Okay, so this thing that Gabby's talking about here with projecting movies on a wall, they have, um, they have kind of a building that's sitting in front of them. With this basically got a flat wall, and um, they've made the most of it. They take a movie projector, and they project a movie right onto the wall. So while you're eating, you can be watching, you know, Night of the Iguana or, or some other fun little movie that they, they have that they have running there, which is a great idea. Very, very fun. Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, the food here, I've got to say, is absolutely delicious. Your brother, Julio, is, 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 the, is he the head chef, or is he a chef, or what's going on there? Okay. He, he's a chef. He runs the kitchen. Uh, but we have a very good uh, chefs uh, on our kitchen. Uh -huh. So, he supervises the service and everything or all the modifications that we decide to do on the menu and the dishes, presentation, uh, add this, remove this. So, he's in charge of that. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, um, he does he does cooking classes, right? Yes. He started uh, last uh, December, I remember, with his cooking class. And it's a very, uh, very good way to show the people a little bit of us, like a family, and of Mexico, because every, all the recipes are traditional Mexican food. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, used to do it like our grandma, like they still do on a small towns for example the mole uh. he teach you to make uh, salsas okay. but on molcajete because it's different if you do it on a blended uh -huh. blender or on a molcajete right traditional you know, all right like. so go ahead tell everybody what a molcajete is it's like a it's, it's like a, a, molcajete a mortar is, and pestle right yes it's, it's a lava stone mm -hmm. Uh, well, we have one over there behind you. Yeah, it. this is audio, though. It's not so good that way. But, you know, este. I'll put a picture of a mojajete in my, on my website. You'll yeah, find it at www.portoviartotravelshow.com. Go ahead. It has... has um, minerals. The stones has minerals. So you need to... Uh, the ingredients combines with the mira, uh, minerals and, and really tastes uh, Oh, really? Wow. Different. I didn't know that. You, Uh, he suggests on the cooking class like to s do the same procedure of the ingredients yeah. but at the end do it on a molcajete and do it on a blender so you can the, the salsas will taste different you can taste the difference yes wow okay All right, so you got to go to his class to get that, you guys. And so what else does he teach? He teaches... Uh, uh, how to make tortillas, handmade tortillas, how to make uh, uh, guacamole, tamales, oh, wow. uh, tortilla soup, 
de I guess the best is the, the mole, the, uh -huh. traditional, the traditional mole poblano. Okay. Also, we serve that recipe here on the, on the restaurant. And the stone soup. And really, the stone soup is very funny. Did you say stone soup? Sorry? What kind of soup? Oh, stone soup. Oh, okay. Caldo de piedra. Okay, all right. I, yeah, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a uh, traditional from uh, for from Oaxaca. Okay. And and it's very funny that <laughs> that dish because he took you to the uh, malecon or to the river, and yeah. the people pick their own stone. Pick their yeah. own rock out of the out of the river, huh? <laughs> ah. So. All the dishes are very traditional, and also he is very passionate to teach people yeah. how how to do it. So it's a funny way to teach to do it. Also uh, include the ricea tasting. Okay. Because uh, um, okay. we talked a little bit about ricea at uh, the last episode with um, a couple of episodes ago with uh, with Jr. We we talked all about ricea. So tell me about ricea tasting here. Okay, on my family, uh, my father's family, my grandfather used to be a producer of ricea. Ah. So this, this come because our family. Yeah, this now, is in your genetics, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> now we have our manager, Muriel. Muriel is my uncle, so ah. he now is producing the ricea. And he's the expert that he teach the people... A very good ricea and with a margarita, how it tastes and everything. So this is what we try to show to our customers is all the family and tradition that we we are. Mm -hmm. Well, ricea, when you talk about local dishes, you're, here you're talking about a local drink. Because ricea is definitely uh, native to this part of Mexico. I, I say, I don't know if I'm correct, it's the Mexican moonshine. Uh, that's what I call it too, <laughs> Gabriella. Yeah, all right. I think I got it. I think I nailed it. Cool, all right. Well, thank you for confirming that. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so um, you uh, mentioned that a lot of these dishes are family recipes. They're created by... Um, you know, by you, by your dad, and, you know, when, when he had the Fonda, right? I mean, these are, 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 is there anything left from the Fonda that is still here today? Um, well, from that time, we still have the lunch special. We uh -huh. serve uh, from Monday to Saturday, from noon to four. Okay. Uh, and actually, the price is 75 pesos. So it's oh. a complete meal, but it's... Uh, special right uh, well these recipes comes you see my grandmother when you arrive she yes. has 94 years old so yeah. she's still she eats every day here uh -huh. so and why not she uh, she <laughs> tastes the food and she said if it's okay well done or if it's not it's missing something the green the way uh -huh. to do it uh, so well, you got a taster uh, yeah good for you she is like a great, great um, resource, yes, of information, like how Vallarta used to be. Uh -huh. on she's, your, she's your historian here. Yes. Ah, very nice. For everything. Cool. Wow. All right. All right. Um, what might a guest expect when they walk into your restaurant? I mean, you know, you have a variety of seating arrangements, you've got multiple levels, you've got a patio, um, but tell my listeners maybe about like the menu here, for example. Well, I guess we have a complete menu because you can find like uh, very good options between Mexican food, a little bit of seafood, uh, but everything with the touch of the family. For example, on the as an appetizers, we have the, of course, the guacamole. But the tortilla soup, it's the. It's killer. It's yes. so good. It's so, so good. So we have uh, mussels also, 
that is a very good is half Menier and half uh, Chipotle. Mm. So also that can be a, a, a whole meat, a whole meal. A meal yeah. Yes, because our uh, 10 pieces. So wow. it's enough for one person to come with rice and vegetables. Also on the salads, we have uh, the traditional Caesar salad we prepare on your table. Oh, neat. So it's kind of hard right now to find a restaurant that has that uh, preparation on your table. Mm -hmm. But is that tra uh, when the... Uh, when Julio or the waiter uh, explained to the customer that that salad is Mexican, some of the people, they didn't know about that information. Oh, no. And they start ex uh, explaining the history about the salad and how uh, they prepare in Tijuana and, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So... Also, some of uh, ingredients on the salad, we include, like, uh, ingredients for local suppliers, like mm -hmm. el tuito, like panela. Panela, it's a, it's a special cheese made here uh, uh, on Mexico. Mm -hmm. it, it's fresh, so it's uh, very good. Also, we have on the Mexican specialties, the chile relleno, a traditional poblano pepper stuff. So it's a very good. The nogada uh -huh. is a must. Uh. Uh, people need to try it. <laughs> the poblano, the mole poblano. We have the tamales. Oh, it's very good. Wow. The tamales. Wow. The fajitas. Fajitas is more known for it's the... It's more like Tex-Mex, right? Yes, it's yeah. a Tex-Mex. But also we have... It's because uh, people want it. You have to have it, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, but the enchiladas. Uh -huh. The enchiladas with uh, green or, or red salts or with mole or with the three colors. Nice, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also we have different choices of meat, of protein. So it could be shrimp, chicken or meat. Also on the seafood, we have mahi-mahi. Uh, mm -hmm. But for example, there are some months of the year that it's impossible to have mahi mahi but we have red snapper instead but uh, on menier sauce diabla or breaded also we have a specials like lobster and en enchiladas or big prawns prepared on your table oh wow uh, so we have you've got but you've got a it's a it is really um Heavy on the Mexican um, uh, influence. Um, you can hear all those things that she's talking about. You've got the molis, you've got the enchiladas, you've got the tamales, you've got all of these very, very traditional Mexican dishes with their touch on it. And, uh, you know, that three color uh, uh, enchilada, enchilada you're talking about. Yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy. You know, this just got, you look at it and it's, it's the enchilada and it's got three different sauces on it, um, you know, spread crossways across it and it's uh and you know all the flavors and just wonderful i mean terrific um all right so let's talk about house specialties you have any kind of house specialties or have we already talked about them okay as a house specialties well we have a for example the the special prawns the big prawns mm -hmm. i prepare on the table uh, we call uh, shrimp special, also the lobster enchiladas. Oh, wow. Uh, the, sea, the seafood platter, uh, that is a big, big, uh, we call mariscada in Spanish, but it's a big plate for almost three or four persons. Mm -hmm. And it worked. It. Yeah, the, well, for three or four people, yes. yeah, sure. But, well, what can I say about the menu? Uh, well, you've nailed the menu. You've, you went through the whole thing. So I think you said a no, lot about it. No, I miss a lot of Oh, you me. did? Well, yes, get the menu. Like, Come on, let's take a look at it. Come like on. the arrachera. Uh, okay. The barbecue ribs. Oh, wow. Um, that must be good. Yes, the spaghetti with the... Uh, spaghetti ajillo is with... Uh, 
uh, ajillo, right. that is uh, guajillo, pepper, and garlic, right. and also shrimps. Uh -huh. Are oh, very that good. I, I'm start getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Kidding me? All right. Yeah, also on the desserts, of course, we have the homemade Napolitan flan. Okay, so what's Napolitan flan? Uh, it's the the flan the flan napolitano Mexican recipe here. It's uh. It's like uh, Napolit Natalapano or whatever. No, no, no. no. What, what is it? What is it? What's Napolitan? Uh, it's just the name of it. It's just the name. Okay, flan napolitano. Flan napolitano, okay. and also we have a special dessert that very traditional on the uh, grandma's. Uh, Eh, época mm -hmm. eh, Kuala, Kuala de Coco Kuala de Coco Okay, so okay. what is that? Kuala de Coco it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a flan Because it doesn't include eggs It's not that yellow Because it doesn't have the granite In the ingredient that, that compact This Kuala is made of uh, Coconut uh, Oil coconut mm -hmm. Eh, masa uh -huh. that is uh, corn corn masa pure corn yeah eh, cinnamon and milk wow eh, well talking about this eh, the you cannot find in other place or in other uh if you Google, you cannot find the <laughs> recipe. I mean, it used to be traditional here in, on Vallarta because on all times, in every in every street used to be a palm, a coconut palm trees. Yeah. So not so many anymore. Not so many. No. In actual days, but we 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 keep that recipe. Right. And we are preparing that so. You should try. Yeah. I, I, I will, I will uh, bring one for you, okay. so you can better explain to that, the what audience it, what it is. Okay, cool. All right, I like that. Okay. Nice, good thinking. All right. So, here in Puerto Vallarta, there's lots of restaurants. I mean, there's tons of restaurants here, and the competition is really fierce. There's lots of choices. So, what do you guys do here to keep your restaurant on on you know on the tops? Towards the tops of all these nice lists like uh, like TripAdvisor and Yelp and all those guys. I mean, what do you do over here? Well, of course, we are on TripAdvisor and Yelp and uh, Facebook and Google, but we uh, didn't do the job. The, our customers do the job. Our customers take the time to leave a review, good or bad, that help us to uh, have um, improvements of on our service or, or food, or that help us to motivate our people, uh, our workers to do the best, mm -hmm. because we are a team, we are a family, most of our workers has years with us. Oh, good. So last year we we received a reward from TripAdvisor of uh, 4.5 stars, I guess, wow. or circles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they do circles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and dots a, or something. I don't know. What and that. a flag, you know, that uh, uh -huh. excellence <coughs> of excellence service. Yeah. So that is uh, that that help us sure. to do the best. And every season and every day to try to do a good service and very good food. And also the word of mouth. Yeah. You come here, you recommend us. Maybe you try our food and you decide to, to include or um, include us on the podcast yeah, on during your visit to Vallarta. Happened. See, that's what happens. And you do such a good job. I had to come here. Also, uh, we work together with the board office of Puerto Vallarta mm -hmm. uh, to promote the destiny. If they have uh, uh, bloggers to visit Vallarta and they, in they include us on the trip to uh, try the Mexican food. Uh -huh. So everything... Uh, 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 
one of these and one of that help us to to stay on the mind of the clients and on the top list uh, on the to do things in Vallarta during their trip. Excellent. Yeah, and when you are when you're front and center like you are, it's it, it makes it a little bit easier. But still, it's I'm sure it is it is a little bit of a struggle. But uh, you guys do great. You guys are always busy, which is fantastic. Uh, thanks to our customers. That is thanks to they. Yeah. Because they take the time to, to come. Between all the, all the very good restaurants that we are on Vallarta, they chose us. Yeah, and so that means you guys got to come. And, um, and then when you do love their food, why? It's not a bad idea to give them a good review. Now, I saw that you have some tours, some of these um, Vallarta-type tours that sometimes will stop at your place. Do they still do that? Yes, we are. We have a lot of years doing that. Yeah, that's another great way to get people to introduce them to your restaurant. I mean, I think it's a great idea to introduce them to your restaurant so that, you know, just give them a little taste. Yes. So that they'll come back for more. They try our food. On the tour, we offer uh, tortilla soup and... Enchilada with mole. We call do enchilada because one size is chocolate mole or mole poblano and the other is green mole. Ah. And our, uh, tequila banderas tasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay, so that's really cool, you guys. If if you are on one of those food tours, um, you just may be lucky enough to be treated to, uh, you know, to Gabby's, which would be really, really nice. Uh, let's see, we talked about Ricea, and uh, so that's all good. And we talked a little bit about entertainment for your guests as far as projecting the movie on, on the wall. Do um, you have any other kinds of entertainment uh, that, uh, that comes here, or is that pretty much it, other than the music that you play? Uh, well, at this moment, not on the... Uh, during October to April, we used to have... Uh, Music on the breakfast and lunch time, uh-huh. uh, and we will continue uh, this coming October. Oh, good. Okay. It's a guitar. Oh, good. Yeah, that's like, nice. Yes, like trova. So they are for uh, noon to two p.m. Okay, during this uh, during lunch times. Yes, lunch time. All right, wonderful. All right, and that's, so that's during the high season is when we're talking about there. Um, all right. Now, whenever I come here, your waiters and waitresses, I mean, they're just so professional. They're passionate about your food. Um, they're just as passionate about your food as, as you are. I think that's really <laughs> cool. So I'm sure you're really proud of your staff. Um, yes, and, we are. Yeah, really. You, yeah, you said that you had people here that have been here for 20 years even? Yes. Wow. Well, uh, that, that we proves that a, you're, they're good bosses, too, that they'll stick around. A, or a chef on the mornings. Mm-hmm. His name, her name is Ophelia. She has like twenty years working here. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> so she knows her way around the kitchen, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Well, let's see. Is there anything that we've missed that you can think of right now? Um. Uh, well, no. We talk a lot uh, about the restaurant, but I would like to invite you to come to visit us for breakfast, lunch, and or dinner. Uh, because the ambience is totally different. If you come for breakfast, it's not the same experience as if you come at night. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like the restaurant really different because the movie, the lights, the area outside. So uh, also the food. Uh, so, it's a, yeah, you got different menus for different times of the day, yes? Yes. Now, for example, uh, from May uh, 15 to the end of May, we are participating on the restaurant week. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's a setup menu, three times, uh, three courses menu. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, for example, our menu this year is going to be as an appetizer. You can choose between tortilla soup, that is a really traditional from Mexico, ceviche, or plantain empanadas. Mm-hmm. 
as a main course uh, you can choose from the chamorro the chamorro maybe you know as an osobuco osobuco okay, okay. never heard of so chamorro so chamorro yeah. is a mexican way to call it uh, and the osobuco is like a french way or yeah <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> but a new word for me here so uh, it's very good it's traditional uh, the shrimp enchiladas, mm-hmm. and I don't remember the third option. Sorry, okay. but right. I will. <laughs> I will give you the 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 menu. It's all good. And for the dessert, we have uh, the koala de coco, of course. Yes. And which I'll tell you about after uh, we we talk here. I'll, I'll, she's going to share it with me, and I'll share it with you. Yes, yes, of course. So. Like us and a lot of re- different restaurants, we are participating on, on this. So it's to invite the people to come to our places if you haven't been here eh, or try our food. And our menu, it will cost three ninety nine pesos. Mm, okay, so it's a, it's a bargain, you guys. It's like $20 for a gourmet meal, okay? So what's, what's wrong with that? That's all great. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a event that people wait one year no every year on the same dates yeah. we are participating yeah. and every year the menu is different sure so you should come and try the chamorro the chamorro okay so you guys so on Monday I wait for you alright I'm gonna come so let's see you got the 15th uh, till the 31st is restaurant week and I know what you're all saying it's restaurant weeks not restaurant week because it's two weeks long plus a day so there um all right. Oh, I had a conversation with um, someone who is a blogger, um, uh, Diana Edelman. She did a blog on vegan dining in Puerto Vallarta, and uh, I had her on the show a couple weeks back, and she said that she came here. So you have some vegetarian and vegan um, choices on your menu, but it's not specific on your menu, right? You can just kind of help people find it, or do you actually have them listed as vegan or vegetarian on your menu no are not specified on the menu okay but yes we have uh, a, lo- uh, a few options mm-hmm. also for uh, uh, celiac people we have uh, 10 a lot of celiac people here or with a special uh, diet uh, needs mm-hmm. but for example for the vegetarian we can do the fajitas vegetarian fajitas we Uh can do the enchiladas with instead of chicken inside or uh, meat Mm -hmm. we we do it with cheese okay Uh, also the the chile relleno uh, could be an option sure because it has cheese cheese but also also one day I remember that uh, a customer's want to try the the chile nogada chile nogada has meat inside Mm -hmm. we do it uh, with vegetables inside so we try to uh, serve the different needs for the for our customers so if we can do if we have the ingredients we can do it here so Mm -hmm. it's no problem for us so you can go off menu you can help them out a little bit yes and they if uh, just please you need to tell the the waiter that is helping you assisting and the specifications of the situation uh, situation yeah. they, we have allergic people and but everything but yes we have a different options that can help you well you have been really really kind to uh, to come on the show um, why don't you give our listeners um, the address one more time in your hours and um, also uh, how they can find Gabby's Restaurant online. Okay. Well, we have our website. is www.gabbysrestaurant.com.mx. Also, if you uh, type Gabby's Restaurant, we... And, and finish it off with Puerto Vallarta. Oh, yes, Puerto Vallarta. Mm-hmm. We appear on Google... Uh, we have TripAdvisor. Also, we are on, on Yelp. Right, and <laughs> we, Facebook We didn't page. know until, like, uh, <laughs> one customer told us about <laughs> uh, uh, Facebook. 
-huh. Gaby's Restaurant Bar. Okay. Eh, where else? Where our address are Mina 252 Downtown. Remember, two blocks to your left from the Guadalupe Church. Right eh, on El Dago. Right on El Dago yes, and Mina, right? Hidalgo and Mina on the corner. Eh, we have a nice, nice uh, place with different areas. A patio, the first floor is very uh, nice. Upstairs area is my favorite and outside, of course. So you can find us. Our telephone is... Uh, 222-0484. So it's easy. And, of course, we are waiting for you yeah. to come. Well, I got to say, it's been really, really nice being here and really nice talking with you. You are a delightful guest. Oh, thank you very much <laughs> for inviting us. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your restaurant with me and my listeners. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, Gabby was so wonderful to talk with. And that dish, Wala de Coco, she brought me a slice of it. And it was amazing. It was, how do I describe it? It was difficult to describe. Um, it was a chilled slice of about a half, a, no, I'm sorry, about a quarter inch thick. Uh, it had kind of a, a custard, a kind of a custardy texture to it with little bits of coconut that made it kind of a little bit chewy and it had a little bit of a back taste of cinnamon it was made with milk so it it just it was really delicate it was very delicious i never i never tasted anything like it that's for sure but this is one of these traditional dishes that she says that they keep right there in their restaurant it's a, a secret recipe and it's really good. So when you go there, and if you like coconut, you're really, really going to like this dish. And how about that 94-year-old grandmother that she has? She is so sweet, you guys. Anyway, go check out the restaurant while you're in Puerto Vallarta. Either breakfast, lunch or dinner, whatever you feel that you, maybe all three, okay? You're going to be treated to a real fine Mexican cooking. Well, that should do it for this episode of the show. I hope you enjoyed our talk with Gabby from Gabby's Restaurant. And next week, I want you to stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta. So until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and I depend on your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off your message. And remember... If you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to ViartaInfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour right through him, right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. JR's on-the-ground experience and knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were to use someone else, so just do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And once again, if you like this podcast... Please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes if you would. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So, thanks again to Gabriela Casallon Flores, Gabby, and you're going to find links to Gabby's restaurant in the show notes at www.puertovallartatravelshow.com. Also, don't forget to check out Adrian DeCano's work in those same show notes, and we'll have his contact information there as well. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, 
and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Yeah.